Delta Hydrofoil. I've been building foils for five years. I'm based in Barrington, Rhode Island. So uh, today I want to discuss a little bit about the theory of kite hydrofoiling, how it works, and the sort of analogies that can and can't be used in terms of designing something like this with respect to aircraft and where those analogies break down, and then uh, possibly uh, discuss where we might go in the future to have possible improvements. This really is an underwater airplane, but there's some differences. There's a lot of engineering knowledge out there for aviation, and it makes sense to use that knowledge to guide us to design these hydrofoils. But we can't be bound to it too strongly because there's some significant differences, and, and I want to talk about those. So the first thing I want to talk about is the force arrangement on a kite hydrofoil. As probably many of you know, the front wing provides the lift up, but the rear wing actually provides down force, and I want to talk about why that is. For actual positive stability in an aircraft or in a hydrofoil, the center of gravity, uh, the force down, is actually significantly forward of the force up. So your weight on the board is pushing down maybe here. The center of lift on the wing is somewhere near the center. So without the stabilizer, in your normal stance, this thing would dive. Okay? And what the stabilizer does is it pushes down and it evens that force and that provides the stability. And if you think about this, if this thing pitches down, what happens? This angle increases and increases the downforce and returns it back to its stable point. If this pitches up, then the downforce decreases on this and it returns back to its neutral position. So by having the force down, this thing now becomes stable. Okay. Now on an airplane, the difference between the center of lift and the center of gravity may be very minuscule, like on something this size, it might only be a half inch. On a kite hydrofoil, it's probably out in front of the wing, which is absolutely unheard of in the aircraft world. And so the question becomes, why is that? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, if we think about a hydrofoil, most of, so you think maybe this part is in the water from here down. So all the drag components of a hydrofoil the part that's keeping you from going forward is maybe centered down here. So the board is here, you're standing on top of the board, and the force is vectored through your harness. So the drive, what's making you go forward, is up here, about this height, okay? And the drag is down here. So this is a huge torquing moment downward, right? So, in order to make that up, there's only two ways. Either you can stand way behind this thing, back here, or the force needs to be provided by the stabilizer. So it's actually the stabilizer that's providing that torque in order to make this uh, work as a force arrangement. And it's really unbelievable that you can have a drive force so far above the drag force and still have this thing work. And in fact, it's a very stabilizing arrangement. The other thing that's quite different between this and an aircraft is if you have an airplane, so you can imagine just the bottom of this, so the weight on the airplane is centered somewhere around here, but in this plane, the weight is here. It's pretty much right at the wing. On a hyperfoil, your weight is up somewhere near the drive line. So once again, your lift is coming from the wing here and your weight is here. So what does that do? Well, interestingly enough, so say this pitches forward a little bit. So your body pitches forward with it. Now your center of weight is way in front of the wing. It's destabilizing. It's actually forcing a further deviation in the track. On the other hand, say you pitch up. So now your weight goes back, the wing pitches forward. As the wing pitches forward, it actually swings in front of your weight. And again, it's extremely destabilizing. So the only way to create that stability is again to have a huge amount of downforce in the stabilizer. If you do the calculations, 
the stabilizer can produce up to 200 pounds of downforce when you're going downwind. The wing has to make up for that downforce. So the wing has to produce whatever amount of weight it needs to support plus the downforce of the stabilizer. It's a huge amount of force. So, you know, if we, and this sort of destabilizes the thing. Imagine if this were a paraglider. We turn this thing upside down. Now the weight is underneath the wing, right? The situation's opposite. If this pitches up, your weight is now in front of the wing and it pulls you back. If it pitches down, same thing. It's like a pendulum. 